Some very basics about radio tubes. Here we see all kinds of radio tubes from the past. EF9 made by Philips mini watt. That meant that the filament current was not too high. Here we see uh, tubes in a metal envelope and many American tubes were also made that way. And here completely classical old school tube from the 50s. But when you study radio books you can also see this kind of tube in radio books from 1920 or so. The anode and the cathode are clearly visible. The anode is the plate that you see here. And the cathode is the filament here inside. It was a not uh, indirectly heated tube. So the filament was at the same time the cathode. Want to tell more about that later. Here we have more modern tubes, EF tubes, made in the 60s and 70s by Philips. Mini watt tubes, 6.3 volts uh, filament uh, voltage at approximately 100 milliampere or so. I don't know that exactly. You have to study the tube book here to find out all the specific properties from all the tubes, all kinds of tubes. This was a very, very popular book published by De Muider Kring in the Netherlands and issued all over the world, many languages. You see rectifier tubes. Okay, um, this was an old tube from a, a cathode ray tube television set. It was the rectifier tube for very high voltages, say 20,000 volts or so. You can see that uh, because of the way the tube was built. Uh, the anode is a kind of real tube and here inside there must be the filament and the uh, cathode. The tube was big, had to be big to prevent uh, sparks inside the tube. Uh, here also old tubes from television sets from the 60s. Also a rectifier tube. The P, uh, indicating with the P, uh, the European tubes starting with a P under indication um, it meant that their filament voltage was higher than 6.3 volts. I think it was approximately 16 volts or so. I have to study that in the tube book. Um, here again the beautiful old classic tube. But uh, I wanted to tell something more about radio tubes. You see a kind of metal black layer, it shines a little bit and it's caused by the so-called getter. Uh, to get all the uh, disturbing ions out of the tube when, it, when the vacuum was uh, properly in the tube, uh, there was always metal inside such a tube and uh, that metal uh, send it out ions, but these ions had to be um, catched and that was done by the getter. So inside the tube there was a location where from the outside uh, by means of a flash or so or an electromagnetic field could be ignited so that all the metal ions inside of the tube were catched. And that's that layer here. And you can find it also here, that metal layer. It's caused by the getter. 
and here also to keep the tube to make inside of the tube a completely pure free uh, vacuum with no ions or whatever inside that could disturb the proper functioning from the tube. Uh, when you study tube books you can always see that you have a um, directly uh, heated uh, filament or indirectly. Indirectly means that um, the filament and the uh, cathode are separated. And that's visible here. The filament here is inside a kind of tube or whatever construction, doesn't matter. And the tube where the filament is inserted is covered with materials that uh, have the property that they can um, send out electrons very good. For instance, thorium or other uh, materials. A layer here, when it's heated, this layer, it sends out the electrons very well. Um, so that's the way to make a more modern tube. The grid here, the anode here, uh, electrons are negative, are attracted by positive uh, surfaces. Uh, the anode is positive normally. Um, electrons flow from the cathode to the anode and the grid here inside affects the flow from here to here and that also means that when you connect here for instance um, a transformer or a resistor that's bridged by a high uh, resistance um, a headphone for instance from 1500 ohms you can hear the noise inside the tube but also hear the uh, signals that are that enter here on the grid. Uh, when the grid is made positive or negative or around positive and negative, the current here is repelled uh, or not repelled, so the tube lets all the um, electrons pass and that means that the tube act, acts as an amplifier. This was the first video. I'm making a second video. I found that uh, the first video that I tried to make was not stored on my camera. So I hope this is a good uh, first video and after that uh, we go to the next video. Perhaps I tell the same things, sorry, but it has all to do with uh, my camera. Uh, I didn't film the first video properly. Thanks for watching.